for joining us here on today's Global. Uh, um, Michael Mogren, first to you. Uh, why is it important we remember the Reformation today, do you think? In Scandinavia, we pride ourselves for being countries of, um, of the Reformation. It was a starting point for the most successful story of welfare states during the last uh, centuries. Successful starting point. Bishop Keddy, did it have to be as violent over the centuries as it was? I read uh, an interesting quote from you saying the Reformation was a great misunderstanding. That's how you describe it. I did uh, describe it as a great misunderstanding. Whether it has to be as violent as it is, we have to go back four or five hundred years and see the society that we were then living in. Many things were violent then, which are not now, not just religion. Uh, that doesn't mean that I agree with the violence, but uh, I don't think it had to be as violent as it was, but that's the history we And inherited. when you say misunderstanding, what did you mean by that? I think if, uh, well, we see it today in the, in the fact that the churches have come much nearer to each other. The big technical issue was uh, Luther's doctrine of justification by faith. That the Catholic Church accepted as recently as 1999 and removed what was considered the big obstacle between unity between the two churches. Uh, just tell me more uh, about how that event of 500 years ago, in your view, has fashioned, has shaped religions? Oh, very much so, because there was a, a, some sort of unity before that. Uh, admittedly, the Orthodox churches, as we now call them, had left in the, the uh, sort of five, six hundred years before. But the unity of the church in Europe was split by the Reformation. Therefore, the picture we have today of various Christian denominations of all sorts, Orthodox, Catholic, various Protestants, Evangelical, free churches, that is all as a result of the Reformation. So that, that means, of course, that there is a very different picture to what, say, our sisters and brothers would have had 600 years ago. Bishop Mogron, you were listening to that, but I was reading a quote from you uh, talking to our producer saying you're quite afraid for the future of religions, for people, for Europe. Tell me why. Why are you so afraid? In the medieval Europe, and especially here in Scandinavia, in Northern Europe, we had an ongoing conflict between the churches and the kings. The state and church were in a, a constant conflict. That stopped with the Reformation. And church and state constructed states together. They constructed nations. And for us here in Scandinavia, it's been a successful project. And I'm afraid of, an, of a Europe which is falling apart with no power, no unity in the nations anymore. So in terms of lessons that we need to learn and draw from history, from 500 years ago, what would you say they are? That unity is a good thing and that the state, that people outside the church structure can be good allies also for church. And do you think the church can actually provide it? Because one of the great challenges for the church is, is the dislocation, the disassociation with so many of the, particularly the younger generation. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean that the powerful gospel of Jesus Christ is a, is a gospel, is a message for the future and not so much for the history. We have just seen a little part of it, I presume. Uh, Bishop Kenny here, I mean, I know that you're involved, and we said in the introduction, you're involved in a lot of the dialogue between uh, different religions. What are the key bridges, do you think, the gaps that still need to be overcome? Uh, most of the dogmatic questions have been solved. There is something still about what bishops do or do not do with the Lutherans. That's about the only dogmatic question. We've now got to a situation where we uh, have more to do with ethical questions, which are the problem, not least about human sexuality. Um, the Catholic Church is famous for its views on that, and we don't need to go into those today, but uh, that's one of the areas. The other is the ordination of, uh, of uh, women to the priesthood. At this moment, the Catholic Church does not see its way forward on that but that does not mean that it's an impossible question. But those are the questions that Martin Bashir in his piece was raising right towards the end of that piece, talking about the, the potential for a second reformation with these fundamental issues still unresolved that threaten 
more sort of great rifts within the church? Uh, obviously, there's always threats when there's disagreements. I wouldn't uh, go so far as he did in the end of that piece, uh, saying that these are fundamental rifts. Uh, the big difference at the moment to, between what happened at the Reformation and now is we actually talk to one another. And uh, as you said, the sort of dialogues which I take part in and lead mean that uh, there is much more opportunity to discuss these things. I think, therefore, less chance of major rifts. Uh, Bishop Morgan, just a final word on that thought. The dangers potentially, probably not of the magnitude of the original Refora uh, Reformation, but a second Reformation on those fundamental issues that uh, Bishop Kenny was talking about? I'm afraid of all the theoretical issues because they are splitting us. And the world needs that we, w that we join together and work for social justice and, uh, yeah, a social good world where it's possible to live for future generations. Well, bishops, both of you, we have run out of time, but thanks you for joining us here on today's Global. Thanks, both of you, for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, still to come on today's programme, well, this mum and her daughters coming up in this picture fled the war in Syria, found out why they've been included in a photographer's atlas of beauty. <laughs>